All right, we have people joining us slow and steady. That's okay. Uh, we're going to give it a second here as a few more people find their link to the webinar and join us. I'm going to get myself a screen share here. <laughs> welcome, welcome. For those of you that are here, um, for those of you that are enjoying um, other conferences, myself included, uh, I have been um, between uh, doing some things here and then as well as attending Inbound, which is now as a virtual summit this year, um, which has actually been super cool. I have, I will be honest with you, I am not, um, not a huge fan of a lot of virtual summits and everything, only because I'm like, uh, I'm like, I already have so much work to do. If I'm going to sit in front of my computer, I might as well do that. And, uh, but they, they've really done an amazing job. Um, so you guys get me first, which is super exciting. And then uh, right at the top of the hour, um, I will be leaving because I don't have to go back into the inbound conference um, and do my presentation for them is on the uh, the no office sales force be, uh, so that you can go ahead and grow your business, get yourself to a point where you have more employees, more people that are working for you without actually having to have an office. And how cool is that? Um, that actually is a great segue into some of the, the new things that will be coming out with KO Advantage Group. Way too soon to tell just now, but please, um, if you've been following along with us, stay tuned because 2021 is going to have some incredible announcements going forward, especially for those of you that are either looking for sales jobs or those of you that are small business owners and you're like, how do I hire somebody? Like, what do I look for when I'm looking for a sales unicorn? So that is going to be really, really exciting. I am soon, um, pumped about that right now. Um, so I'm just going to take a quick look in the room. Okay. I don't seem to, I usually have um, somebody in with me to kind of manage things a little bit, but that's okay. I'm a pro. I can do this. So let's get started. The chat is open. So feel free if, um, if anything resonates with you, if you have a question or anything, feel free to, to just put it in the chat. I will save time at the very end to address any questions that you may have. But I mean, feel free to, to just go ahead and bring them up as they come up. It's easier just to type it out right away. But don't forget to put in the chat, like, who are you? Where are you from? What kind of business do you have, right? The more information I have about, um, about your type of business, the easier it is for us to... Um, for us to, to go and create um, more, more ideas, more um, conversations that will ultimately um, help you later on. Um, I must have some type of weird, this is so weird. I end up getting a message from myself privately that says that they're here. Oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Somebody is coming in as me. <laughs> so I don't know who that is. I'm like, I just got a private message. It's like, Kim Orleski is like, I am here. And I'm like, well, of course I'm here. <laughs> like, I don't know who's, um, who thinks that they're trying to be funny. Um, and I guess that's a great way of kind of, maybe that, that will be a joke that we pull on one of my other groups is we'll all choose somebody's name and we'll all call ourselves that person's name. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we have one logistics consultant, which is very, very cool. Ah, here we go. Where did you come? Okay. Uh, so we'll just do that. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so you guys can continue to, to work and everything else like that. Um, I have uh, Nizi on my team who will be happy to answer any questions as we go along. Um, but she'll also stop me if we have anything that is really pertinent um, as we go through. Yeah, I don't know why it says my name either. That's so funny, isn't it? <laughs> the joys of live broadcasting. So I want to start off with a true story, okay? So we've been doing KO, KO Sales U. This is, well, November 30th will actually be our third year. Yay! Our third year of the company. Um, and probably right around our first year. I think we had, like, we had just started KO Advantage Group. Maybe we weren't even quite called KO Advantage Group at the time. It might have been just before that. Um, but one of the, our first students that went through our program was a marketing company. 
And they said, we are struggling so bad with our marketing and our, our conversations that we're having. They said, we're, we're struggling because right now we feel so exhausted. And maybe some of you are feeling this right now. I'm just exhausted because I'm going out there and I'm killing and I'm eating and I'm killing and I'm eating. And I feel like, you know, we go ahead and we spend two weeks, three weeks and everything to try to get the client. We get the client, we try we do our best to serve them for that whole week only to get to the end of the month and feel like we're never moving further ahead. Oh, all they were doing was they were trying to find companies that needed websites. They were delivering that website in a week and then they would charge $900. Now, for some of you, that might be, you know, a great number. For some of you, that might be a, like, you know, a really low number. I don't want you to be focusing on the number. I'm going to show you how they were able to 10X their business. And if you want even further than that, we're going to show you how we're starting to 10X our business. Um, that will be a conversation that I'll take offline because our numbers start to get really big, really fast. And I don't want to intimidate you with some of the numbers that we're ultimately dealing with with our clients. But what they would ultimately do is they would do it all over again. So I want to tell, tell you a little bit about my sales background. So I was, I worked in a lot of high value sales and I'm not going to go into too much about how this ultimately came around. But what I want you to take away from this is that the companies like Xerox, American Express, Purolator, Clarion Medical, if you recognize some of those logos, if you don't, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, all of those companies were focused on selling a premium service or product for a premium price. They were all positioned themselves in the marketplace to sell for that much more. They positioned themselves to say, if you want our product or service, we pay, you pay more for us than anyone else. And this is a real thing that we're facing even today as, as business owners. Cause I'll see a lot of business owners will come to me like, well, Kim, nobody's going to pay this amount of money for this type of service. Nobody's going to pay more for a credit card. And yet American Express has proven them wrong. Nobody is going to pay more for a copier. If they could get a copier for $20,000, why in the world would they pay $40,000 or $80,000 for a copier? And Xerox proved them wrong. And so I, I was maybe very privileged in growing up, being raised in my sales mentality, working for companies like this. But I want you to see this as an opportunity for yourself and say, there's always somebody who is top of the market. How are they positioning themselves so that they stay there and not move themselves down? Now, today our company is the leading sales process. We help connect clients and with emotional intelligence for those high value sales. This is why sales for our graduates, when they graduate from our sales training, be, come back to us and say, oh my goodness, this feels so natural. This feels like the right thing to do. And I'm like, yes. Yes, because we are connecting emotionally with our clients. We are connecting on those high value deals. We're asking ourselves the deeper questions that nobody else is asking. What, do my, what does my client truly need? And one of those questions is going to be the way we're going to start to pivot ourselves, start to shift ourselves into that high value offering. At the end of the day, we are, I give you more sleep. Right? I mean, and who couldn't use more sleep? You can hear from my voice, I can definitely use more sleep. More sleep because you can predict the sizes and the dates of when those deals are gonna happen. Imagine being an entrepreneur, a business owner, a sales leader, and knowing with like 80%, 90% confidence here in September, what's the date today? September 23rd, knowing today on September 23rd what you are going to close in the month of October what you are going to close in the month of November or even December. Now, how much more relaxed would this allow you to feel? We're going to give you empowerment to know that you're only going to get the right clients at the right time, which is really why we're trying to push you to that premium product and way less anxiety and certainty. Because really what we end up doing is because we don't know, we get ourselves into these anxious things. I don't know where I'm going to get the deal. And so I'm anxious because I'm not ready to invest and I can't invest, but I need to because that will help me to get the deal. And we get into these vicious circles. But what if somebody said, whoa, stop. Let's help you get this process, take away the anxiety because we know that this is going to help you. And that's really what we do. 
this is me today. Uh, that is me on the left in case you're like, which one? They look like twins. No, that's not my twin, Oprah Winfrey. Um, she's my best friend. She just doesn't know it. I am also LinkedIn's most influential sales leader to follow, Success Magazine's most inspirational blogger. That is my third book, Sell More Faster. I was actually seeing if I had a copy on my desk here. It's actually just off to the side. Um, if you want a copy, let me know. We can get you a free ebook version copy, um, as well as I'm Startup Canada's Female Entrepreneur of the Year. So let's talk about creating premium services and products. So the first question I want you to ask yourself, and be honest with yourself here, are you creating yourself a job or are you creating yourself a business? Now, this is very much Michael Gerber's e-myth. Like the whole premise of the book e-myth was right around this concept. And go ahead and even put in the chat, like, you know, like you're like, I want a job or I want a business because there's a, there's a slight difference between the two of them. And as an example, um, for my company, I did my best and I still do I, to create a business. A business means that whether it is me or someone else doing that service, doing that training, offering, you know, technology, or sorry, not technology, but training, learning to, to our clients, it doesn't matter. The money is still coming in. Whereas my sister, um, I love her, right? But she created herself a job. She built herself a nail salon in her house. And as long as she was working, she was making money. So sure enough, um, last year she broke her arm and when she wasn't able to take on clients because with a broken arm, you can't really file somebody's nails, what ended up happening to her so quote unquote business? Done. It completely died. She ended up having to refer all of her clients to other businesses, other, other nail salons. And it took her a really long time to start to bring it up, but then end up, what ended up happening again? Right now with COVID, she ended up closing it down again. She didn't have anything else to offer. So be, be honest with yourself. What is your company right now? If you were not to work, would your company still exist? And if it does, or maybe it doesn't, ask yourself, how are you ensuring that you're creating something that is bigger than that? So real quick, the big summary of this whole thing is I'm going to give you four steps to grow really fast. Number one, focus on the highest dollar for the lowest effort. And we're going to talk about that as we go forward a little bit more. But really, I want you to say, what is something more than what we're currently doing? What is 10 times more than what we're selling? Like, like get yourself pictured, number one, what that price is. And then we start to craft what the vision, what the solution will be at that price point. Number two, build the system then to allow people to receive your mid or low dollar offering without you giving away service. And we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit more. But what I ultimately want to do is that as you grow your business, you are up here. And if people want you, they pay more for you. Down here, this is your business and people will still pay for your business, still pay for your service, but they know that they're not getting you. Number three, then we create the free offering. And this could be in the form of, of memberships, meetups, maybe those eBooks, maybe um, any type of a free online content and everything. I don't want you spending your time, especially like, especially if you're in the growth stage of your business, if you're less than two years and you are not paying yourself, I do not want you wasting a significant amount of time on the free offerings. You will waste your time and feel exhausted. And then number four, you're going to do this all over again, because once you go through it, you're going to go back to it and you're, you're going to go back to it. When we started our business, this is exactly how we did it. I charged one-on-one -on -one for clients. And then I went ahead and created a, uh, a sales program, which people then paid to have me teach. I went, I, from there, I went on to hire a trainer, which then people paid to have someone else teach them to go through the business. And then at the very end, we said, okay, well, now that we have all this content, what can we possibly give away for free, right? What, what are people, what were people paying for that we could give away for free so that we can reiterate? Now we're at a time where we're actually doing team trainings and beyond that, we're actually looking at massive solutions. So, I mean, from our, from our, our small point, we were at one point, we were like, okay, well, what could we get for $500? I mean, 10X that. What could we sell for $5,000? 
and we 10 X that. And we said, okay, now what do we sell for $50,000? And we're now at that place. The next place that we're going is in, uh, what do we sell for $500,000? And this is in the process of three years. I do, I'm not like walking around with some type of silver spoon in my mouth. I am doing the work and I'm teaching you exactly how we did it so you can replicate that effort. So the first thing in step number one, it says, um, the step number one says focus on the highest dollar for the lowest effort. So this is also known as your MVP, your minimal viable product. And I don't want you to get confused with this because a lot of companies go ahead and they, they create something that uh, ultimately they, they ask themselves, what can I do with this, right? The minimal viable product. And they think to themselves, what is the least amount of money I can get from somebody? which is the wrong way of thinking. If you ask yourself, what is the least amount of money you can get from somebody? The answer is zero. Nobody wants to pay for anything. Nobody has any money. Nobody wants to pay for it. If I can get it for free, I will take it for free. So by asking yourself what the minimal viable product is, if you associate the definition of that to be what is the least amount of money I can get from somebody, you already know the answer free. So go ahead and change your business into an amazing hobby because that's all you're going to do. You're going to spend all your time giving it away, giving it away. And even if you're making some money, let's say maybe a hundred bucks, maybe a couple hundred bucks, is that really enough that you feel like you've made it? Would you say, man, if I got 10 clients at a hundred bucks, oh man, that thousand dollars, I really made it. Now, you're never going to say that. So I want you to change the definition of this minimal viable product and instead say, if it wasn't the lowest amount of money, it could be the lowest amount of effort, the lowest amount of energy that I could put out. What is the thing that I could put out there that is not going to take a significant amount of my time, but will provide me with the most amount of money? Now that transformational thinking is going to be like pivotal as we continue on. And this is why we're able to go ahead and reiterate and reiterate because we ask ourselves, what can I do for even more? What can I do for even more? This is the abundance mindset. And so when you ask yourself, what is the least amount of effort for the most amount of money, things start to come together. Because where I do see a lot of people spend their times, and I don't care if you are a business owner or you are a sales rep or, or you are you know, maybe a sales leader, we're sending, seeing too many people that are like, well, we need more leads, we need more conversations. And the first thing they tell their people to do is just go out there, go out there and do for free, go out there and do for free and do for free. And I wanna be, I wanna be parent here because um, like on the transparency side, yes, I mean, you got this webinar for free, but this is only because it was based on some of the very best content that we were able to capture a dollar for at some point in time. So the first, the, unfortunately, a lot of business owners will spend all their time on, the, on the, the opposite side of this pyramid. And they spend all of their time thinking about what is that low dollar or no dollar offering? What can I offer the person for free? Free, 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 free. And the problem with free is that when you go to charge for it, nobody, nobody wants to buy into the value because I got that for free and I know what this person can give me for free. So what is this person, what is this other person going to give me that is worthwhile? What is that other person going to give me that is worth something for me? And they spend no time in that mid-level thought, which is actually area number two. And they don't spend any time in asking themselves, what is the top of that pyramid? What is the most amount of money that I could possibly get? So when we flip this around and we focus on, on instead of trying to take the bottom of the pyramid and trying to build up from that, we want to take from the top of the pyramid and build below it, right? Raise it up, build below, raise it up, build below. And so the first thing you want to focus on is what is your high dollar offering? What is that one-on-one? -on -one? What is that thing that only you could offer, or maybe not just you, but maybe it's because of a collaboration. Maybe it's because you have so many connections that if I put all of these connector points together, now we have something valuable. Now, the way I want you to think about this, we're going we're gonna to go a little bit backwards on this, is to take the top dollar that you want to make, whatever that is on a monthly or an annual basis, Okay, take, take your top monthly number. Maybe it's 10,000, maybe it's 100,000. I don't care what the number is, right? But you're gonna take that number, you say, if I could make $10,000 a month, if I could make $100,000 a month, right? Life would be perfect. And I want you to divide that somewhere between the number of four and 10. 
because those are the only number of clients that you could possibly serve at that higher premium dollar. And this number should scare you. I hope it scares you. I hope it scares you. I hope it inspires you at the exact same time. It's, it's something, oh my goodness, but oh, oh my goodness, what could I offer? Like now, now the possibilities are endless. For us, I mean, this was coming to the conclusion of like, what could we sell for $500,000? And the reality is I only need one. I only need one of those companies and I would feel like I made it, right? And whatever your top dollar company is, you start with one. But if you could get four or 10 of those, now life is perfect. So we start by focusing on what that is. And I'm, I'm, we're going to dig into a little bit more on how do we figure on how, how, what that is or what that is. Um, but we'll get there in a second. So the second thing we do is as we start to service our clients, as we start to give them this premium service, we can start to, to document what we're doing for them. How are we doing this? How are we getting them through this path? How are we helping them to build their business? And then the second level, this becomes the, the one of to few. This is you as a small group. This is you or someone else. But the idea here is instead of me servicing you on a one-on -on basis, this is me servicing a few people. So in my business, how we did this was I started with one-on-one -on -one coaching. I found a bunch of entrepreneurs that ultimately needed to have sales training. Uh, as we went down there, then I said, okay, well, these few people need sales training, but they're not willing to pay me on a top dollar. Maybe I could create something that is for all of them together. Later on, I ended up changing that so it was someone else that was now training it. And we took what that was being created and we started to offer more low dollar, more free dollar offerings because it kept challenging us to create something more, to create something more, not to create multiple tangents. There's another sales training company that I, I'm thinking of as I'm saying this. And what they do is instead of what we do, which is like take something good and keep making it better and better. They're like, take something and then take something else and take something else and take something else. And what they end up becoming is the jack of all trades and the master of none. And I want you to think about this. Like, how do you create this? There was a marketing agency that was doing this and they started off by building websites for their companies. And then they said, okay, well, how do we start to train companies to write really good blog posts and everything, right? I mean, they all want, they all want us to write the blog posts. They can't afford us to write the blog posts. So maybe we go ahead and we train them how we do these blog posts. Would they be willing to pay for it? Turns out they were. And then from there, now they started to create new content, which allowed people to feed back into their funnel. Now, the reason why we also want to focus on the top to the bottom, this is actually a pricing strategy, is because when you focus on the top dollar, People will say, oh my goodness, that's so expensive. What could you offer me for cheaper? And then we have something to offer. Okay, well, that's still too expensive. What could you offer me for cheaper? And then they have something. Whereas if you start from the bottom and hope that you're going to create enough value to push them up, nobody will ever go for it. Nobody will ever say, oh my goodness, I am so excited with this $10 offering that you have for me. What can you sell me for a thousand bucks? And you're like, oh, awesome. And they're like, oh, you know what? A thousand dollars, that's cheap potatoes. What could you sell me for $10,000? And you're like, you come to the right place. Like if I could create sales strategies like that, oh my goodness, can I tell you that I would be a billionaire? Unfortunately, that is not the case. So the first thing I want you to do, write it in the chat, like, you know, like declare this, whatever that top dollar price is for you. What is that, that top dollar price, that, that number that either you want to achieve divided by four and 10, um, or maybe it's um, right now it's, you know what, we're already offering this top dollar price. What would it look like to 10 X that? Write that number in the chat, declare it. You can write it to me privately if you don't want other people to see, you could just write it out loud. I don't care, but, but by putting out that number and actually like making it real, there's something that happens. Like the moment we type it out the very first time, it's like imagine having to type it out the very first time and then having to do it again in an email and maybe on a marketing brochure or something else. Right. Imagine how amazing that would be. Right. I've had a couple of people write to, um, to me actually privately. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah. You know, and then we had, uh, you know, Michelle, good for you, Michelle. Let's do that. Right. Okay. So exclusivity pays. And the way we create exclusivity is that we have to ask the question, what does your client really need solved? 
what does your client really need to have solved? Like, like ask yourself, when we're in KO Sales U, we dive deep into the buyer's buyer, right? Who is your client's client? Because if I can solve for my client and you could solve for my client, doesn't that make things amazing? Isn't that exactly what we want? So what is the real question that your client is asking? Now, chances are this real question is not really related to your product or service, but it could be. For now, let's just get clear on the question and then we can find the solution. So whatever your client's question is, maybe that's, I need more money. I need more profitability. I need, um, I need more freedom. I need more relaxation. I need more work life balance. I need something. How do I get this? How do I, how do I keep my business steady if I want to actually reduce the amount of hours I work? How do I find a sales unicorn? Um, how do I get a website that actually converts clients on, on the website and makes them buy? Um, whatever it is, right? How do I use my tax account? accounting in order to get me to a point where I'm actually not paying any taxes, right? What, what are some of the, the, um, uh, like, uh, abilities or the, um, the tax deductions that are available out there so that I can actually get to myself to pay no taxes. The quest, there's a question your client has. Now, the other thing is then what is that ideal outcome? What does your client ultimately want? And ask yourself, how do you connect or assist or help them to build their business that helps to save them time and make them more money. And I, I underline those because I want to drill into that whole idea of saving time and making more money. But at the end of the day, if you cannot help your client do more, if you cannot help your client make more money, make more profitability, make more clients, whatever it is, then you are not taking them down that path. You are not moving yourself to a premium or exclusive product. You are like, we do that too type of service level offering. And nobody wants to pay a premium for somebody that does that too. It may not be anything significantly different in terms of product or service, but the way you approach it, the way you convey it is going to make all the difference. And that's really what sales is. So from the sales cycle and the buyer's journey, this is about the, the sale, the client getting to a point where they want to actually figure out like, what am I not aware of? We're going to be in this kind of top right corner for the most part, but at the end of the day, we will move people through this, right? And, and by understanding what that looks like, we can get there, but we have to understand, have the end in mind, as Stephen Covey said, right? You know, figure out where the end is, move ourselves backwards, and then have the questions available. Because when you're creating value for your client, the value you create for them is far more valuable than the hours you put in. Can we all agree to that? Like, can I get like a yes? Like, absolutely. Like when I create something for my client, they should feel like they got, you know, 10 times the amount in terms of return that versus what they had to pay, right? Because it would have taken them like years, decades, maybe to get to the point that we are like, let's be honest here. There's the old saying about the mechanic that you drive the car into the mechanic and you're like, it's making a clinking sound, clink, 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 clink. And the mechanic says, okay, pop the hood, pops the hood, takes a look around, right? Takes apart, sh -sh -sh, clink is gone. And he gives you the bill and it's a thousand bucks. And you're like, what? It's a thousand dollars. You spent like 10 minutes. Like how, would it, how could you spend a $10? And he goes, no, no, no. He's like, I want you to be clear. He's like, it wasn't the 10 minutes I spent. He's like, the part itself was like only like a hundred bucks, right? The reason I'm charging 900 is because it took me 30 years to get to the point where I could fix it in 10 minutes. Now that is really what we're trying to convey here. Because when somebody comes to us and says, well, how do you do sales training? How are you able to do this? It's like, well, this took, like, this was like decades of experience. This was working for all those premium. You're getting the sales training of the Xeroxes and American Expresses and everything for your business. Now, if you are a website, I'm going to pick on website designers because we're using that as the story. If you're going to use a website designer, right, it's not about not being able to do your own website. There's companies like Wix and you drag and you drop and you're like, okay, I could eventually do this. But nobody, if they value their time, is going to want to do that because it takes a lot of time and it doesn't get you ultimately what you want. It's just good enough. Whereas you pay somebody because they know how to create a shopping cart on your website, how to customize the colors, how to make changes on the fly, like in such ease. You go to an accountant, not because you can't do your own taxes. If you were given enough time, you could do your own taxes. 
but you go to an accountant because there's a lot of tax laws that you don't know about. There's a lot of deductions that you chances are you don't know about. There's a lot of other math and like, you know, elements when you're changing, including your business taxes with your personal taxes and your spouse taxes, you're like, oh, this is all so confusing. And the other thing is at the end of the day, you're getting an audit insurance, right? If you ever knock on wood, got audited, you have somebody who's like, listen, I already know what this all looks like. I'll take care of it. That's what you're ultimately paying for. So your client's business ultimately becomes better because you've helped take away that time, allowing them to do something so much more. So what I see though from a lot of people is the wrong way to price. And this is where when a lot of business owners get started or when we start to create maybe a new product or service, we look at it from this perspective. We say, okay, well, how much money do I want to make? So in Michelle's case, she's like, I want to make $20,000. Awesome. Okay. Well, I want to make $20,000 and I want to, you know, I want to have a little bit more free time. So I'm only going to work like, you know, 35 hours a week. And if I take that $20,000 divided by 35 hours a week, it comes up to this dollar, dollar price. Awesome. So anytime a client comes to me, I'm going to charge this dollar. Now, the problem with that is that it doesn't take into account the things that you need to do as a business owner. It doesn't take into account the things that you need to do to prospect, to research, to build that relationship, to help develop new content, to help create new solutions. It doesn't take all of that into consideration. It, is, it only becomes a transaction for as long as I'm serving you, you're valuing my time. But all the time that I'm not serving you or I'm serving you, but you're not paying for it, which might be in the sales meetings, in the conversation, in the discovery section, I'm saying that that's not valuable, but it is, it is valuable. Right. And as a business, we have to take a look at how do we want to future invest? If you look at companies like American Express, like Xerox, they don't ask themselves, how do I break even on this? And then ultimately add in a little portion. They say, how much do we have to charge? Number one, so that we're charging above everybody else. How do we value that premium? And then how do we work our way backwards so the client gets it? <clears throat> Oops something happened there. There we go. Oh, I somehow have lost my screen share here. So let's just go back here. I hope you guys can, are you still following along with me? Just put a, just give me a little quick thumbs up or something on the chat. If you can still see my screen again, for some reason it all disappeared. Okay. So the right way to prep price, right? What is this project worth when the client is completed? Now, this becomes a lot more future focused, right? This, this becomes a lot more of, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, and this becomes a lot more future focused, right? This is like when we're working with the client, what will they ultimately get? And this is one of the things we challenge our students to do in KO Sales U is like, what will your client ultimately get? What you, and my guess, there's some clients that are, some of our students will be like, oh, I feel like I've answered this question. But yeah, but their answers become so much more ingrained, so much bigger by the time we get to the end of the program that it's like, if I would have accepted your first answer, I would have never accepted it, you know, because I want you to think bigger. How much time has your client saved, right? So for those of you that are saying, well, we help our clients save time. Awesome. How much time? And if they didn't have to spend that time, what could they have been spending it on? How much more revenue could they generate in that time? How much more clients could they potentially work with? Maybe it's just free time that they want. Maybe they're up to their eyeballs in work. And if I just had 10 more, 10 more hours a week, like I wouldn't even spend anything with it except for like Netflixing and chilling with my family and kids, right? Whatever that is. What is that worth to them? Because I know like for, if you talk to a retiree, their time is worth so much more. There's very few people that once they've retired and they've been retired for about three months that they're like eager to go back to work. They're like, I, I'm busier than I've ever been. I don't know how I fit work into my day. <laughs> and so you want to make sure that your clients feel that same way. Like, like this time is so valuable. I will now pay to not have to go to work as opposed to the other way around. When it comes to things like how, how do you value that? I want to be, I want you to know that it's not up to you to tell your clients, right? It's not, there's, there is no mathematical formula because as we deal with our clients, everyone is unique and different and individual. 
And I can't tell you, Chelsea or Thomas or anybody else in the chat, what your time is worth to you. What I can do is ask the questions and get you to tell me what it's worth to you. When you're trying to figure out your return on investment, it is up to you to ask the questions, not up to you to tell the client. So the value of time is not just about time savings. It's not just about that. It's what the client will do with that time savings. When you are working with a client one-on-one, -on -one, you should probably be taking a lot of their questions, a lot of their anxiety away from them. And by taking away a lot of that anxiety, what will they then be able to do? This is why people are able to charge 10 times the amount. As, as we're working towards that, it's like, what more could you do? And challenge them the same way I'm just challenging you. Right? What could you offer for 10 times more? And they're like, oh my goodness, and their mind is blown. And how much time do you need to figure that out? And they're like, I don't know. Like, you know, I'd probably need at least a few weeks, a few months. Okay. So if I took this element away from you and you were able to create a project that was 10 times more, would that be a worthwhile investment? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would be a worthwhile investment. Because what you've done is you've created dreams and opportunities for the client. Now think to yourself, well, you're trying to figure out, you know, your sales strategy. You're trying to figure out your pricing strategy. You're trying to figure out, you know, how do you talk to and find those ideal clients? If you didn't have to spend all that time figuring it out, what would you be doing with your business instead? If someone just gave you the answers, what could you be capable of? And is that worth more? Is that where you're going to be ultimately able to get to those values? Um, I saw a few people in the chat, they're putting their dollars in there, right? And we had like, you know, the, the 25 a month, $250,000 a year, right? I had $10,000 a month. You know, I had somebody said $100,000 a month in the private chat. What's stopping you from getting that? Is it because you're so stuck trying to figure it out that if you didn't have to figure it out, if you had the solution in front of you, you could do it, right? Would that be worth something? So the cost of value, so the way we look at this is that value, right? That value of the time. So whether this is your time, whether this is your client's time, however you want to look at this, is equal to the benefit minus the cost, okay? So the benefit has to be, so what I'm willing to pay you as, uh, if I'm your client, what I'm willing to pay you has to equal or be greater than whatever you're going to charge me, right? Um, plus, um, plus whatever, whatever I could potentially gain from this. So to, as an example, <clears throat> let's say you are, you're building me a brand new um, ad marketing campaign, right? And we're like, okay, great. You know, how many people are we going to see? How many eyeballs are we going to touch? Blah, 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 blah. But we never get into it until like how much this could potentially make me. And so now I have to get to a point where I'm like, okay, is $5,000 a month, if I pay this person $5,000 a month and we get to so many eyeballs, will it eventually convert? And there's so many questions that ultimately I say, you know what, I think I'm just going to hold off on that decision. For some of you, I hope this is like, oh my goodness, this is exactly why I can't close the deals is because I've like com or confused the situation. So we get to that value side of it. Whereas if we had the conversation, we're like, okay, well, how many more clients, if you had if one of those clients ended up buying from you, how much is that worth to you? And I'd be like, oh, I don't know, maybe like $10,000. And you're like, awesome. And if two of those clients bought from you, right? You know how much, oh, it's $20,000. And now we're getting this bigger picture. And we're like, okay, so now if I could potentially get two of those clients through this marketing ad to buy from me, which is equal to $20,000, and you're gonna charge me 5,000 to do this ad, I still gain 15,000. Is that worthwhile? Like, yeah, that's worthwhile. So you want your pricing to be set somewhere between about 10% to about 25% of the total value you position. But be cautious because pricing too low can... Sorry, I was taking a step. Um, pricing too low can ultimately lose you business as well. People think that like the, there's the mindset, you get what you pay for. And when I see that the price is too low, I ask myself, huh, what's missing? What am I not getting? And that's a dangerous place to be. If I don't know what I'm getting, why do I want to invest in that? 
So people will ask, what's wrong with that product? And there's a story about this. I was working with a, um, a custom home builder. So this custom home builder would make these beautiful estate homes, like $2.1 million, like just stunning, stunning. And this person was walking around, they're doing a show home. And he's walking around, he's looking at it. And the, the sales rep is like, oh, look at the travertine. Oh, look at the hardware. Look at these amazing floors. And they're going through and they're pointing out all of these wonderful little luxury details and everything. And as they come around after about like 30 minutes of walking through this house, they go to the dining room. And the dining room is the place where we're supposed to close the deal. And they ask, invite the person to sit, please sit down. We'll talk about what we can do for your custom built home. And he's like, yeah, he's like, but hold on before I do that. Like, I don't want to waste your time. Um, how much are your house is worth? And the sales rep was scared. They didn't want to say that this house that they just walked in was worth $2.1 million. What if the, price, the client didn't have that type of money? What if it was like, you know, too much money? So they said, well, we start at $600,000 and we go up from there. And he says, mm-hmm, yeah, that's, that's what I thought. You know what? I am sorry I wasted your time. I thought you built better houses than that. And he walked away. Because now they had thrown a price that was so low that the person had so assumed that this beautiful luxury home was worth down here. And the immediate thing that came to his head was what did they cheap out on? So don't put yourself in such a low position thinking that you're going to win business because I want to challenge you and say, how much business are you potentially missing out on because your price is too low? Because when we show price, when we convey price, it's not about the price. It's about the price with that return on investment. Remember, we've been asking our, our clients questions throughout this process. Like, what is this worth to you? What is this worth to you? And price should never be the landing point. It should be brought out and, 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 and for, you know, $5,000 a month in marketing spend. And we're going to get, you know, in front of, you know, at least 200 people. And you said that, you know, if you were able to do that, you could probably convert to, to two new clients. And you said that that value was going to be worth $20,000 or more to you. And, and, and. Now, what you'll notice what I did there was I said, and you said, and you said, and you said. Not, and I guarantee, and I promise, and this is what's going to happen. All I did was ask the right questions. The clients gave me the information and I gave it back to them. But if you do have to get into a, a negotiation, this is called give and take negotiations. We never give anything until we get something in return. So never give, like never, if your client says, well, that's still too much and we're desperate, we need to get the deal. Don't just give away the price discount. Ask for what more they can give you. Could they just give you full payment? Maybe earlier delivery, future business. Maybe it's a payment structure, right? Okay, well, you know what? Um, most of the time, our clients will, will balk, not because they can't afford it, but because the cash flow doesn't work for them. And so if we can work it into a payment structure, that's more reasonable. Is there referrals? Is there testimonials? Is there something else we could possibly get them? There's a lot of things, chances are, in your business that's going to provide you a lot of value. It is up to you to ask yourself before you go into the negotiation, what is valuable to you and how are you going to get it back? How are you going to get that, that exchange of value back and forth? So this is, there's a lot of things here. And what I want you to capture away from this is the idea is as you start to push the envelope, as you start to get yourself into higher values, higher prices, you don't have to have everything figured out. You don't have to have the program created. You don't have to have um, sample websites. You don't have to have a client base of testimonials. Sell it first and then create what you thought you needed later. I'm part of a business peer mentorship group and we talk about the concept of sell it first and create it later. And the other 11 people in this group embrace this concept and it has been unbelievable and inspiring to watch how their businesses have grown and expanded this year this year because of the concept sell it first create it later what could i create what could that be worth could i talk to somebody coffee is free and if you could talk to your potential clients and get their opinions get their ideas and then say what would that be worth to you what would you be willing to invest in that 
and then create it with them. That's sales. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Sales should be an opportunity for collaboration and creativity. Let's create it together as we go forward. And confidence is one of the biggest selling features that you will ever have. One of the biggest things that our students even say from our program is that I have so much more confidence having these conversations. I feel like I can finally uh, articulate. I can talk about what my value is and worth it and never having to double check, guess myself. Change your price and your sales cycle will have to change. That's the reality. You can't automatically go from something at price point that you were 10 times it and think that you can have the exact same sales process. It does need to be slowed down. But if you go in with the anticipation that I'm worth up here and you're going to settle down here, that's an okay place to be. If you go in already thinking that you're worth 10 times or 20 times the amount and that you're giving your clients a deal by offering them the price point that you are, that confidence is going to like relay across the table. Your client is going to buy into that. So your next step, right? The first thing to do is ask, what does your client truly need? What, do, what does your client, like when you think about one of your best clients, and if you don't have any clients, think about who you would ultimately want. What is the question that they have? Now this has to be product or service aside. This is something that they're just challenged with, right? We go deep into this in our buyer, our, um, our oh, sorry, um, the buyer persona one. Who is your client trying to serve? And then spend time digging into that, building more questions, building that sales process. Um, this week we're actually, we do, um, if you haven't heard, we are now offering a free trial class to our programs. I've talked about a few classes. The buyer persona one, um, we're actually doing that one next week, right? What does your client truly need? If you're interested in a, in a trial classroom, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to do that here in a second. So the true ending of that story, okay? That marketing client, they went ahead and slowed down their process. They asked way more questions of the client, right? What would this do? How would this help you? How would this impact you? They found out more about what the client could impact in their lives. And this became a bigger picture beyond just the website. This was a way of communicating across businesses. This was a way for my business to, to um, create transactions with you. And that became a bigger picture. And immediately within 30 days of them starting the program to like, you know, when they had actually started, they weren't even actually finished the program yet. They were in the midst of this. They moved their average sale to $9,000. So they truly 10 X their entire business. And there was really nothing more that they had to change except their mind. Doug McKay said the same thing. He says, you know, they ended up actually finalizing deal and because they provided value, because they were able to talk with the client more, the client was able to pay, offer to pay them more to do more work for them. He was like, it was like, I got two deals in one. Why, like, why wouldn't I do that more? Okay. So go to this website, kimorleski.com slash KO webinars. Okay. There is, there's a section in there. Um, I believe you can actually download the, the sales cycle sheet. Um, but then the next step is um, there, there's something else in there, but if you go to like the contact us page or something or within that page, let us know that you're interested in that free trial classroom. Well, one of our sales team will actually give you a call, have a conversation with you and see um, which one you're available with and let them know whether that's me, whether it's Mike, whether it's someone else on my team who will be talking with you. Let them know. Kim said that there was a free trial class I could take. These are live classes. I want you to be aware of this. This is not just a trial class. This is actually one of our classrooms and you will be put into that classroom, assuming that there is still time. So we only we have the classes limited, right? We can't put everybody even on the phone call today into a trial class. Um, uh, that's just way too many. But as long as there's space available for our trial classes, we will have that available. You want to find out more about this. This is the best thing to do. Why? Why do we do this? Because if LinkedIn calls me their most influential sales leader to follow, Zig Ziglar is my most influential sales leader to follow. 
And he says, you can have everything you want in life when you help enough people get what they want. I truly hope that you got what you want today. Don't forget to put in the chat, uh, what are you going to do today? Based on what you learned today, one thing, if you had to do one thing today, what are you going to do that's significant and is going to have an impact on your business? Maybe that's just reaching out to a client. Maybe that's, you know, actually deciding or starting to plan what your 10X is. Maybe you are getting to a point where you're like, you know what? I think I need to dive into this deeper. I'm going to sign up for, you know, one of the free classes if they're available, right? Maybe it's to get my book. I don't know what it is. Put it in the chat. Put that intention in place because you're more likely to get it if you say what it is that you want. Awesome. There's the, um, the website one more time. So don't forget to take a look at that. We're going to be turning this off here right away. Um, yeah, Michelle's already going to be like signing up for the free trial if it's available. Awesome. Awesome. Okay.